listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Survivor After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Survivor After Show. Woo! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hey everybody, Bing is for doing it. Tonight what we're doing is we are going to recap the latest Survivor episode, season 26, episode 12, the beginning of, of the, the end. end. Yes. That's right, I'm Jerry Manthe, uh, also in studio, Ryan H. Allen Carrillo. How you doing everybody? And oh my gosh, the specialist, what are we gonna Philip do? Shepard. He's Woo! in the house. Yeah, he's, he's here, here people. So excited to have you, Philip. Seriously. It's awesome to be here. You know, anytime you get an opportunity to be on the After Buzz, you got to take it. You this guys, is true. You have such a large audience, you know, 20 million downloads, I understand. It's crazy. Fabulous. It's pretty huge, yeah. I Which think, is, I'm pretty sure AJ and Justin are very jealous right now. It's, yeah, AJ. It's, we, we keep sending them home. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, it's just going to be one of us. I know. I wonder which one it'll be. We shall see. <laughs> I'll cast my vote tonight. No. I'm calling Andrea and have her send me her idol. Oh, my gosh. I know. Bless her. Oh, we have, what a great episode, though, really. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, before we get into that, I have to say I am the proud new owner of the Philip Shepard, the specialist, the Costa Rica job book. So am I. Yeah. Signed to us gloriously. Yes. Beautiful. And I got to talk to you a little bit about this, Philip, because honestly, I really, I don't know what this book is about. I've heard it on online. The buzz is amazing. Yeah. You've yeah. been number one bestseller in Asia for... Well, for five consecutive days, we were number one. We're in the top 100. So it, it's, it's incredible to get that kind of response, particularly from a place that I haven't been. So I really appreciate it to uh, <laughs> the folks over there in Japan and, and uh, Asia, Indonesia, that are actually buying the book. Also in Brazil and Australia, it's doing very well. And it's, I think, the 40th most gifted item in Canada. So wow. we're really excited about the support that we're getting. Wow, where do you get trivia like that? Like, I, I want to know. Like, Well, what it is is that, you know, anytime you're the specialist and you know you're going to get an opportunity to talk about what it is that you do and what you love, you do a little bit of homework and come in with the research. And it's also good to let the folks that maybe are on the fence about getting the book, let them know why that people are buying it. And the reason they're buying it is because the book is about a guy who used to be, what, a former federal agent, and he's not anymore. And so he becomes known as the specialist. And a woman comes from Costa Rica and says that her father's been kidnapped and she needs his help. They agree on a fee. He goes there, finds out that her father's no saint. He stole $90 million from a <gasps> bank that he's the president of. The problem is that's where the drug cartels keep their money. That's where the Hezbollah keeps their money. And a good friend of mine, Zev Pinsky, a Mossad agent now, following that Hezbollah money, teams up with me, and we're going to get her father, and we're going to solve this case. Don't give me so too this, much. So this, is a, so this is a true story, then? <laughs> this, is a, this is a novel. This okay. is a novel based on uh, my persona. And I'm the inspiration of the novel since I conceived it. And I had my brother, Charles Peterson Shepard, write it, who's a brilliant writer, wrote for at UCLA and, and writes every day of his life now. So when I went to him, uh, he conceived it. It's got wonderful reviews on Amazon. And I'm so grateful that uh, he wrote it and, and was able to pick up my voice. The fans are going to see something different, uh, right. like the way I am in my everyday life. Well, who life. better to write your book inspired by you than your own brother? Right. Right. I'm sure he spent... Most of, well, most of your life together right. living in the same space. Absolutely. <laughs> but this is not a true story. It's a completely made-up novel. Yes. Well, I, I cannot wait to dig into it. Yeah, okay. For sure. You look very handsome on the cover there, sir. Absolutely. See, you know? I told you. Mesmerizing eyes. Mesmerizing. Even in every person. week she's falling in love with you. Every week. Well, she I, knows I've been in love with her for a very long time, watching you know the seasons that she was on, and and oh. also we did a fabulous job dancing down at Reality Rally together. <laughs> you guys did. Incredible. Yeah. I was watching that from afar. It was we an did. all night thing. You we know? cut a rug. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, all the fans are wondering if you're wearing your pink underwear as we speak. Well, you know what? We only bring those out on special occasions. Special occasions. Uh, season 22 and fans versus favorites. <laughs> I like how he says we. Like there's. 
a couple of you in there. Well, there's the specialist, and then there's <laughs> Philip Shepard. Well, I think at this point, you know, an underwear sponsor probably should pick you up. You know what I mean? And like, you know, People help. keep saying that. But Calvin Klein. Come on. Call Philip Shepard. Those were, those were American Apparel, by the way. Oh. Which I love American yeah, Apparel. Yeah. I do, too. So I do, too. They could have your book and sell your underwear. I don't know or maybe you really can get a pair of underwear with the book. I Package think, deal. I don't <laughs> think that's the direction we're headed in. You know, we've got some shows we're working on. You know, I've got a project development hell that I'll be doing, which is an internet web TV show. I'm actually playing a lead on there. We're shooting it this weekend. And what am I going to be? A former federal agent working a case. Wow. And, and some things of his are going to be missing that are very personal and very dear to him. And we're going to we're going to get that solved in this show. It, development hell. Uh, so that'll be coming up sometime next month. Well, we all know that you have a lot of things in the works. Yeah. And uh, if there's anything else at the end of the show you want to plug, let us know. I'm, and we're going to talk later about how we okay. can all get in touch with you and everything. Perfect. But we have to talk about the episode. I don't want Absolutely. to make anybody out there mad at me and go, oh, no. They're furious already. I, <laughs> get over it. Um, so, yeah, this this episode was pretty awesome. I mean, it was a double elimination, which right. I, I thought for sure it was going to be, you know, Reynolds and Eddie gone. Yes. Yeah. Right. But no, we got a little surprise at the end. Which, thank um, God. I mean, that's uh, why we love Survivor, because it's always unexpected. That's and right. stuff like this makes the fans really, really enjoy it, too. Absolutely. Yeah. You see somebody with the immunity idol, you know that they're probably going to use it if they think they really have to use it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not always. That's Not right. always. Not always. I, what, what I love is that, you know, Malcolm went last week, and that was pretty shocking for a lot of people to deal with. But, you know, the tribe name is still... <laughs> Enel Adam, his uh, mom's name. He must love he that does. he's gone, and that shows up on the screen every time. He for sure yes. does. <laughs> and can we talk about how beautiful his hair was? <gasps> he, he was had, like he had, Fabio. He had like yeah. beautiful locks coming in there at the at the yeah. tribal council. And you, I like how he constantly tilted his head to the right, so it flowed nicely over his shoulder. Absolutely. <laughs> How's your relationship with Malcolm? Malcolm and I are two uh, what I call senior guys of the show, in the sense that we both played twice. We both know that. You're playing the game. You're playing it real hard. And uh, when the game is over, it is over. You know, right. we're grown men. So he came up to my local uh, spot where I hang out, and we saw each other and, you know, made the, made love and said, hey, brother. <laughs> you heard it here sit. first. <laughs> we made love. You know, give a hug. Spoiler and, alert. <laughs> yeah. Hugged each other. And uh, he was with a friend that he was, you know, a, a female friend that he was with. And, and it was great to see him. And we talked a little bit, and then we went on about our way. But I think that he's got his head in a good place. And I know I certainly have mine. There's no ill will whatsoever. Uh, He's a really cool guy. He's, He's a very totally good chill. guy. He was a real good guy, and he, you know, he played game hard, and I played it hard, and uh, yeah, he booted me out the game. But <laughs> well, that's the way Survivor should be. I mean, you yeah. play, and you spend it, you have a memorable time with these people, and like, there's no point in holding grudges afterwards. Absolutely. You know I don't mean? understand these people that spend, you know, two years talking about other people, and you know, I don't get it. Or yeah. years. You yeah, know. and you know, it's, it is funny because some people understand, that, you know, they're a little more mature, and they yeah. understand that right. when the game is over, the game is over. If you got played, you got played. Right. Just accept it. Right. It's Survivor. That's what happens. And you have to realize, right. too, it's just, you know, it's a small community, and like, everyone is not going to get along. Or have, in, in real life, you probably want to hang out with a, even a fraction of these people. That's why you're all together. It's like a science experiment. Right. Yeah. We right. do have a caller. All right. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the line with Survivor After Buzz TV After Show. Hello. Hi. Hey, this is Steve. Oh, hey, Steve. In San Diego. Steve Kazel. Hi, how are you? Hey, man. It was great to hang out with you at the Reality Rally. That was awesome. Likewise. Steve was on my team, actually. We raced the Reality Rally together. Oh, he's really? one of the biggest Survivor fans I've ever met, and he's been first in line at every open call. Well, wow. Steve, how did you do uh, <laughs> with the race with Jerry? How'd you finish? Uh, well, we came in about 50%, man. We had a little bit of a tough start, but we definitely made it up. We we finished the show, or finished the, uh, the race, uh, I think, at 29. So out of, I out think of it was 60, 60 people. Yeah, so, that's pretty good. Yeah. I finished 10th, just so everybody knows. I finished 10th. <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we passed probably 20 people along the way. We came out, you know, a little behind, so we passed at least 20 people. So that was always that was always inspiring to go by people for for sure. I was saying what we all fun of it. I was saying what we all should have done is just try to find a hole punch somewhere and just that should have been the clue and then we just could have been finished. Yes. A hole punch. Yeah, yeah, we could have just went around the thing. I think the three amigos I've raced with them before the first year they had it and they pretty much that was our first initial we should have stuck with that plan is just follow them as fast as you can, follow the three amigos.
Amigos. But, yeah. uh, you know, that's the deal. Next year we're going to follow the Three Amigos. We'll come in first. We'll pass them at the end. Not to be confused with the Three Amigos on this season. Totally different <laughs> totally Three Totally different Amigos. Three Amigos. Yeah. That's different great. Three Amigos. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, I got a couple of questions for Philip. Um, yeah. I was kind of thinking about and thought, well, man, that's a good time to call and find out from the man himself. Uh, I guess since you have him on here, uh, quite the character, obviously. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Hashtag clearly. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Hey, so, Philip, uh, one of the things I've always kind of was thinking, I said, man, to win this thing, you can't not play the challenges. And when I saw you not playing, going under that swinging raft thing, I thought to myself, he is doomed. And, you know, you always kind of, you know, piggybacking off Rob the first time around. You made it really far by doing that. I think that was super smart. And But Rob always would go for every challenge. He win almost every challenge that he really went for. I think he might have even purposely threw a few. But um, in the back of your mind, would you have swam under the raft because in my mind you know as a young kid I almost drowned but then I overcame that I surf all the time you know and I got blown up in a gas explosion I overcame it you know I was 16 I almost died but now, and I ended up being an executive chef so I kind of overcame those fears and faced them straight on I'm thinking to myself man Thor must have had a different strategy he did that for a reason it wasn't really that he was that afraid of water well, is that true or, did you, know, you get all that yeah, yeah. I got all that <laughs> okay. I got there was all that. a question in there somewhere yeah, I got the question Here's the thing. There were, there were three considerations that I, I took in. Number one, um, if you may recall, after the swap, um, I ended up with the, with, the, with, the, with the weaker tribe, basically. And so um, that very first challenge we did where we had to push those giant boxes, it took a lot out of me. Okay, and I hadn't eaten because we lost that challenge. And then we went again. Absolutely. And we lost, yeah. and I didn't eat. Those boys were eating. Malcolm and Reynolds were eating. And even when... Um, Reynolds won that challenge, okay, when he won, Malcolm was still in the water. They showed you that. So, and Malcolm's 25 yeah, yeah, years yeah. old. Yeah, almost falling over. I okay. Mean, just, yeah. So, I'm 50, I was 54 in the game. I'm 55 right now. Okay. Dang, you look good. <laughs> Thank you so much. But there was no way. <laughs> awesome, yeah, man. There was no way I was going to win that challenge. And I was feeling a little queasy anyway when I got there. Yeah. And so, if you take yeah. that in consideration with my own, I mean, I swim in the water, I swim in the ocean. But Given sure, what, sure. given what I, I was feeling that morning, given my own childhood experience, looking at what that challenge was, and the ch challenges always get much, much more difficult at the end. If you're not feeling it, you know, you don't have the energy to do it. Um, I'll just say it like this. Um, it's my responsibility when I'm out there to make sure that I'm healthy and whole. I don't put that on the producers. I don't put that on the network in any way. If I feel mm -hmm. like what I was feeling and in addition to my childhood experiences, it's on me to make that decision. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do this. I just don't feel like I can, I can do this challenge today. I wasn't quitting. I didn't quit. I wasn't medevaced out of the game. But it was I just your thought, choice. It was my right. choice. Yeah. And I also thought. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I also thought that since I had been very strong early on, I mean, Reynolds lost to me a couple of times in challenges, right? You saw me yeah, outlast yeah, yeah. Malcolm and Eddie when I was holding that thing up, the, the, the basket. Oh, yeah. Be a good message. You're a badass dude, man. I figured it was a choice. So my, feel, my <laughs> feeling there was, you know what? I should just probably pull it back a little bit, let them think I'm weaker going into it. So there's a lot of factors that I was considering there. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, That's I, a good I, strategy in a way, maybe, that just that the timing maybe didn't work out. But here's the man, thing. I don't think I Malcolm sent me. Think he made a choice. I don't <laughs> think Malcolm sent me home because I didn't. Uh, do no. the challenge. He I mean, sent me home because right. I was a threat in the challenge. Nobody gives up two immunity idols at, with the, on the 10th yeah. person yeah. unless they feel like, I got to take this guy right. out. He's stopping yeah. me from doing and what I'm trying to do. And let's face it, there are certain people who've chosen that as their strategy. Yeah. Um, Sandra's a good example, and she'll tell you herself. She's like, you know, I don't want anyone to think for a second I'm a threat. Right. So I'm going to sit this one out, and right. you guys are just going to not thing. even notice while right. I win Survivor twice. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. So, thanks, Steve. That was awesome. She never won a challenge, right? I don't think she ever won a challenge. Yeah. No, no, she didn't. All right, Steve, thanks so much for your question. We're going to have to move on. Nice um, chatting, Steve. Keep Thank in you. touch. Keep Talk in touch. Talk to you later, man. Do you know, that, that was, you know, there was a lot of criticism for you not doing that challenge because I think yeah. people were confused, and we were a little critical of you too because the challenge from the previous week when you were underneath that grate right. seemed that seemed to simulate drowning to us even more. But from Ugh. the outside, you were obviously there. But like, while we were watching the episode, we were like sticking our heads up. Yeah. It was like we were like because that that seemed like even more intense. That was, was a scary challenge for me to is, watch too. It was 21 minutes that I was actually in the water in that challenge, and it was probably only one minute that I was absolutely submerged. 
Right. right. So as you're waiting for the water. And I guess to come it's in, only this wide, so you right. could just move out. Right. Like, and yeah. I just screwed up. But the other challenge it's was still, you, you have it this, just seems scary, <laughs> right? Yeah, the other challenge was a lot more complicated than that, and I really wasn't feeling it, so. Well, I definitely want to uh, talk a little bit about Cochran, because on this episode, again, he just really seems to stand out as somebody who is very aware of the game that's going on around him, seems to be very in control of what's going on, and of course, he's just throwing out those sound bites left and right. Um, I about, <laughs> about peed my pants when he was like, uh, I'm making moves that would scare my mother. Right. I mean. <laughs> He's got the one-liners for yeah. sure. Yes, yes. Um, I'm just curious, because uh, I've never met Cochran in person, like playing the game with him, uh, exactly what kind of person is he like in the game? Because he just seems so into it. Well, for my, you know, for me, um, my my whole thing would have been to see if I could have... Um, that was his phone, everybody. Yeah, that was my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you know, basically, I thought I turned it off. But we I got a disco in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, for me, you know, playing, watching him play the first time he played in season 23, I think it was, uh, I found him interesting. I kind of related to him in a totally weird way, in the sense that I felt that he, he was felt ostracized in mm. a way, like he was the smart, nerdy guy, and right. you know, nobody was going to associate with him, whatever. So I associated with him from that, as you know, he's definitely the intelligentsia attaché right. in Stealth R Us. So I liked him. <laughs> He's very clearly much, very smart. Very smart. What um, was his Stealth R Us name? Intelligentsia attaché. <laughs> well, there you go. That, okay. that, that's hashtag. Very yeah, sexy. Hashtag. That's a very good name. <laughs> we'll break it down for you a little later if we get more time. But basically, I like him in, in the game. I thought that he was... Uh, um, you know, affable, easy enough to talk to, and you know, like anybody else out there. But he's definitely a very smart guy. What's yeah. funny, the first time I ever met him was on Halloween, right when his season, I think, was still airing. And it was with him and Andrea, actually. And, like, he was, like, so, like, shy and, like, reserved. And some people would recognize him, and he didn't even know what to, to deal with. But I think after you go through the process of it airing and everything, it definitely changes you. You know what I mean? Oh. You could definitely, he's, like, yeah. playing a completely different game. But I don't think he ever was not thinking even the first time, you know? He just did that big move and then kind of got shot in the foot. Yeah. Well, I don't think he knew where he was going to go that first time when he did it, but, you know, uh, but I think what we're seeing so far uh, up to this point in the game, he's, you know, he's proven he's himself. He's thinking end game. He's thinking, he's thinking he can play the game. He's, he's playing well, he's winning challenges, and he has the one, he's like the comedy relief on the yeah. show. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, he's playing, every move he's made has been so geared towards winning. Right. I mean, the, the food... Uh, auction the other the other episode where he waited out until he could get a piece of information instead of eating food right just showed how strong he is in that respect and right. just to show how strong I mean he was ultimately was Andrea's demise today you know yeah I mean? he just was just like you know you're not with me you're against me and click how brilliant right. when he said that he was like I want, so I want to be on everybody's list to make it to the final three and if I'm not on your list I don't want you around right, right. right. it was right. so clear in that moment like right. he knew he had to get rid of her right Damn it. I know, I know. We, we were just talking well, about you know, Andrea. Like, oh, Andrea for the win. Yeah. I, not well, the interesting thing is, you know, with Andrea also, you know, there, there is a point in the game where, you know, it is a solitary game. There's only going to be one sole survivor. Mm -hmm. And you've got to, you, you definitely got to look at people that other people are looking at that probably wouldn't want them at the end. And so Eddie was clearly, you know, when everybody threw up his name, that should have been the time, you know, for her to go, okay, it's time for him to go, because they're saying his name. Yeah, like you said, it doesn't make any sense that she glommed on to Eddie at this point in the game. It just really doesn't make any sense. So you've made it this far with your really tight alliance. Right, right. And it, it and even in, as far as, like, jury-wise go, it just doesn't make any right. logical sense. I don't think, I agree with you, it doesn't make sense, but I also would say that, you know, just being there in the game and going through all the elements, like, you, you latch onto someone or have like a connection with them, whether if it's just friendship or you have like, you know, a love chats connection. with someone, whether it's love or whatever it is, like <laughs> it's something that you're longing for out there. There's like you finally get to have maybe fun with somebody or have right. some interaction with I somebody. I so definitely like, enjoyed Eddie a lot in yeah. talking with him and strategizing with him and they're similar in age. And Well, that is a 25 year old mistake. That mistake would never be made by a 40 year old woman, let me just tell you. It doesn't or matter. Or what, a married woman. It doesn't, it's single or married, trust me. It does yeah. not matter if you have a love connection with right. somebody. You, you got to put that stuff on hold. Until after Survivor right. is over, like yeah. in the game, you just caused a weakness in in your armor. Right. right. I mean, you got to use him and then get rid of him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like and you in real life. Yeah. It's like tonight. The uh, it was a reward and immunity challenge. The first one, and you know, I'm thinking Reynolds and Eddie, they need to stick this one out, right? right. And what's the first thing that happens? Donuts. Eddie, dive in the water. <laughs> Eddie jumps off for donuts, right. and, and Jeff's eating them, and he's like, "Yep, they're fresh." And I'll tell you something right now. I've had Survivor donuts. 
They're, they're never, not fresh. They're right. never fresh. fresh. <laughs> it's not worth that. Just wouldn't on. make me dive off at all. I just feel like I would get sick. You I mean, do. I get sick if I eat donuts now. Never mind if I'm not but eating. But you know at all. the thing about Survivor, you got to remember, you're so starved, <laughs> right? And you haven't had sugar. And I always, I remember from the first time. I didn't feel it so much this time, but the first time I was in Redemption Island, I remember at one point, somebody else was talking about cheeseburgers and hamburgers, <laughs> and I literally could, you know, as they're talking, I'm seeing them, I'm tasting them, and yeah. it's like. What is this? You know, yeah. it was like that was surreal to me. It was like you know, I got to share this because this you fixate when you hear other people talking about food, right. and I mean that's a constant conversation. Like I can't tell you, it's like twenty four seven. You know, Philip. Right, right. Amanda had this weird fixation on raw cake batter. And she would go to bed every night talking about raw cake Gross. batter and yeah. how much she <laughs> dreamed about it. And right. I was so mad because I couldn't stop thinking about <laughs> raw, raw cake, cake batter. Yeah. Do I eat raw cake batter? Well, no. Right. Did you when you got home? I did. I ate like a whole <laughs> bowl of it. I almost, and then I went and threw it up because oh, I was like, that God. is the most disgusting thing I've ever I think put I'm going to throw up right well, now. Andrea, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea loves peanut butter and bananas. And Clearly. that's all she talked about. And when yeah. I got home, one of the first things I tried once. That's why last you didn't week like she peanut had, butter bananas. I like peanut butter separately, and I like bananas separately, oh my God, but not so two good. together. Peanut butter everybody craves because right. it's the protein thing. Right, right. I mean, that that's like one of the first things that we all. That's yes. probably why she changed her a Facebook profile picture to be the picture of her covered in the peanut, peanut butter. butter yes. <laughs> She's obsessed. <laughs> yes. And then Cochran jumps off for three hot dogs. Correct. Yes. And I I. It was kind of annoying to me that he did that. I was He suddenly got very cocky. He didn't ask anyone's permission. Right. You know, like there's a certain understanding when, when you're like, hey, guys, is it cool? Right. In your alliance, you you usually want to, like, check in with everybody because that can that little small thing that you do is kind of like a big uh, to everybody. Right. Uh, but I've never seen anyone shove an entire hot dog in their mouth like Do you did. think that this challenge is more lean towards females, like, as far as being able to Winning? do it? Winning? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Anything where Which is, like, the first... Feet. Right, because, like, they've all been, like, steered towards men, kind of. Do you know what right. I mean? True. We've talked about that a lot. Like, it's all been on strength, like, the going underneath the water and, like, all those other ones. But this one was definitely geared towards the ladies. You're like, absolutely right, like, yeah. That, there's something girls are about better at balance and, like, and pain feet. and everything. Yeah, Yeah. the the uh, pain endurance level is very high Well, you know, women. a girl could have won the challenge at Cochran, the first one he won, where he swallowed that, that egg. <laughs> oh, that was horrifying. I, think I feel like this challenge would have been hard for you because, I mean, like, it's yeah, so hard for, like, big yes, guys like us yeah, to balance on something like that. You no, my sheer sure weight alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I sat out on He'd be challenge. having the donuts in two seconds. Oh, he would. Remember Redemption Island? I didn't do the challenge where they hung on the bar with your knees over the bar. I was like, nope. Yeah, anything that takes the hamburger. a long period of time and, and causes a lot of pain. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it's pretty obvious why women can handle that more. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Yes. But, um, yeah, and then Reynold, he uh, a couple of times there almost lost it and totally recovered. And I swear I saw him pull out an old coach chi movement, movement. Yes. to, like, get himself back up there. I, 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 I couldn't go there. <laughs> You couldn't go there once. Yeah, I, I could have go that. with the coach movement. Oh no, you could. I swear I, that I thought like, that too. I thought that did? when I saw that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's oh, so that's funny. Coach S. Coach Chi. Coach Chi. Coach Chi. <laughs> no, he was really good at recovering though for a hot minute there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the two girls, Brenda, and this is where I think. All right, Brenda. Well, you haven't heard from you all season, and now Who's all Brenda? of a sudden, yeah, you want to like throw a little challenge out there against Andrea now. Right. Right. Like, it was a little strange. It for was. Sure. Really weird. It just seemed like you should hold that inside at this point. Just don't and let Andrea. And what's funny, that was sort of the catalyst that started the whole thing with the two of them anyway. So it's it like. It did. If one of them just would have jumped off, it may have ended differently because it wouldn't have felt so competitive or weird with each other. Yeah. Andrea was always mindful, uh, you know, of how strategic Brenda could be. Right. As you really? Remember, the whole thing with Brenda's uh, thing was, you know, coming back was that she was, she was premature. You know, um, was she trying to play under the, the radar? Game. No, I think she this time she was playing very under the radar. Very, yeah, very so much so every week it was a big joke in here. We were like, "Who's Brenda?" Very stealth. That's yeah, she she was a good member of Stealth R Us. Yeah, yeah she just kept herself, you know, <laughs> quiet. She 
Yeah. She hasn't said like two licks this whole season. I know it's. <laughs> but she's like, still there. She's still there. But I'm saying as like you know, watching the show, we don't really have much to relate with her or like have any sort of bond with her, like fans and everything else, because she hasn't really had much screen time at all. True. Like we've all found it weird. Like even when like Dawn was screaming about her teeth, which right. that's a whole other thing. <laughs> but like that she, the fact that she even yelled for Brenda is like we haven't even didn't even know they're friends or even talking right. because she's not really getting yeah. any airtime. Well, but Brenda was had already disclosed that she was a diver, a professional diver. She runs a diving company. Oh. Like dive up a thing or dive under. <laughs> No, no, no. Brenda <laughs> runs a diving company in Florida. That's what she does for like a living. Scuba diving? Scuba diving. Scuba diving. Scuba diving. Oh, good she to trains, know. She trains, she teaches all that <laughs> stuff. So I think Dawn called out to her because she was for that reason. For that logical well, reason. Well, there you go. Well, now it all makes sense. See, there's the missing puzzle piece. Yeah. Phil I thanks, Philip. We all talk about <laughs> all that. together. Oops. <laughs> Philip wins immunity. Yes. yes. I mean, seriously, I remember that. And at <laughs> that moment, they had this bonding experience, the two of them, that, like you said, we never saw that coming. No. Right. And now look what happens. Yes. Right. Well, you know, when now you think we about know. it, if your front teeth or your bottom teeth were to you know, if you had a brace like Dawn had and that fell out and you're in a game and you know you're on national television. Right. Yeah. That would be a little horrible. I, I probably, probably would have cried call then on the maker, <laughs> If you weren't calling on the maker or whoever you, you know, prescribe to when you're in that kind of a moment. <laughs> you call on the nearest diver? Yeah. No, you call on the person <laughs> who can save you. Yeah, what's the say you call when you lose something? <laughs> I don't know, oh, I'm not I, Catholic. I don't know, me neither. Right. Um, so I thought it was also interesting that uh, Andrea ends up winning um, a little piece of paper with the same exact map that Malcolm had right. for the idol that she tried so hard to get him to dig up with her sitting beside him. Mm. And a uh, very interesting choice by Eric, who ends up finding it, to just hand it over to Andrea. Right. I didn't get that at all. For a moment, I was like, this is just like you handing over the immunity necklace, dude. Well, clearly, um, Andrea's running him at that moment. You think? You know what yeah. I mean? So she's definitely, like, well, thought she was in charge, which is, you know, again, probably why she went home, because she was a clear threat and yeah. too in charge. It was so strange to me that, you know, I, I don't Bless know. Bless Eric. I love Andrea's reaction when he handed it over to her and she was starting to put it away. It was like, mm. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Like, <laughs> let's go. Like, <laughs> crazy, right? And yeah. she kept referring to it as her, her idol. idol. Right. Well, I don't feel like I had to play it. And I'm like, but I, is it really yours? Possession is 99.9%. .9 I, I guess in that case, that proves that point completely. <laughs> he gave it to her. <laughs> so let's see. I, I wrote a note down here because I wanted to ask you a specific question. Sure. Um, Philip, uh, they keep showing these little creatures in the trees with these like massively big eyes, and they're so adorable. I don't, I don't know what they are, but I just had to know. Did you guys ever even see any of those? Yes, we did. I would climb up at the top of uh, trees to cut new uh, palms, and I went up one day. And by the way, we've learned that they're very, uh, they can attack you if you get too close <gasps> to them. So, what are they called? What are they? I don't remember what they call them. Oh. It's like some sort of a rat. You know, but it's not a rat like, like what a you think. Bat? Like a wombat? Like a wombat or something like that. <laughs> Possum. I don't know the name, so don't quote me on that. But basically, I climbed up and I whacked a palm, and there was one looking right at me. They are just gorgeous creatures, yeah. but yeah. there's something so sinister Sir about, about them. them. Yes, yeah. you put your finger there, you probably get it chewed off. Yeah, and I love that they keep using them this season over and over and over, you know, strategically placed right. with the snakes right. and the spiders eating their yeah. mates. Did you the, spiders, any snakes? the spiders there are huge. We saw spiders that were like, you know, they'd be about that big, and then the legs would be out that I wide. would not be pleased. <laughs> Did you see any snakes? Um, once. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, that's the one thing that... Because we make a lot of noise to make sure, you know, we're, you know, yeah. you know when you go into the jungle, make a lot of noise. So I never went anywhere without, like, taking a stick or picking something up and shaking it. And there's always mice. That's the one thing, too. Rats. Is, yeah, mice, rats, whatever. There's always those. Like, I don't. they're like the universal pest. Yeah, absolutely. They're everywhere. Gross. Absolutely. Yeah. I know in, in Australia, we actually had spiders that were about this big, and if they bite you, you die. Wow. And I, I did see one, one day when we went to go lay down to go to sleep. Wow. And oh. so after that. You couldn't sleep. <laughs> well, I couldn't sleep anyway. But yeah. after that, every night, we were like, shake, we'd shake everything out. That's happened with uh, one our show too. There was we all were on the floor and like there were scorpions in our sleeping bags at this <gasps> one camp, like a bunch of scorpions and different ones. And after that, we found cots in our tents the next <gasps> week. Oh my gosh! I mean the next leg of the race. You guys got cots? We got cots. <laughs> well, you know when I was uh, twenty-two miles a day, you have to have something. You can't get bit by something. I was asleep <laughs> under the shelter one night, like I don't know, maybe three o'clock in the morning, and I had done finished doing the fire and gotten it all ready for the next night. I lay down, and just about the time I'm falling asleep, a crab 
like a huge crab came up right up the side of my face. Like he came up out of the earth because they're like buried underneath. <laughs> and he came up and he started crawling on my face and I thought it was a rat. I literally took the shelter down because you know we had the, <laughs> and I, <laughs> and you, had I was, and you can't see me, but I was like pushing my back up, trying to get up away from this thing. Philip had crabs. And somebody was like, oh, you heard it first. Philip, it's a crab. I've never had crabs. That'll be in the next book. I've eaten crabs. <laughs> Um, I noticed that you guys uh, at some point started sleeping on the ground. Yes. You know, that, that seems to happen a lot, too. Yes. And uh, that bamboo is just the most horrific stuff to sleep on. I think it, 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 it's what drives you, uh, you know, batty in terms of being able to not get 24 hours uh, of right. with sleep. You only sleep yeah. like right. one or two hours and you wake crazy. up again. And you literally, you know, feel like you're outside of yourself. You, right. You know? And even those two hours, you're not really, I mean, you're hearing so much noise and everything. Yes. And you know, maybe worried that a contestant may kill you. And I have to ask you something. Don't kill me. But uh, I heard that um, I'm prepared to kill you. I, no, I'm talking about her. Okay. I heard that you, or not you, but that you guys had hidden the the machete um, in fear of Brandon coming to hack one of you guys to death. I've done that in several seasons with people. Really? Yes. Oh my well, God, that's I some crazy say, people. I would say I yeah. don't. If that did occur, um, I was not made aware of it. I will just tell you that the day that he dumped the the rice out and stuff. Um, the, the machete was there, and that is what made me walk down the beach away from him. It's because I realized he was... Snapped. He, he, something wasn't quite wholesome there. Yeah. No. I, so got away from him. Has there been any rec um, reconciliation? No, I haven't spoken to him um, or text him or anything like that. I, but again, you know, if I see um, Brandon, uh, if I saw him publicly or if I saw him at, you know, at, at the finale. Right. Which you I, are. I, I, which right? I will. Yeah. So I, I would not be disrespectful to him. And I would hope that he would, again, realize it's just a game. Just right. respect each other's space. Absolutely. And show, I, I think, And mutual. hide all the machetes. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the game is over. Anything so whatever Kurt, sharp. <laughs> if, he, if he's listening, um, his family's listening, for me, the game is over. It's like a, it's like a hard-fought basketball game. There's a lot of elbows. Right. They get thrown out there. Uh, you know, people sometimes get hurt. But at the end of the day, the game is over. Shake hands. Congratulations. And move on. And I couldn't agree with you so, more. Here. Honestly. Let's do a cheers to that. Yeah, we go. Cheers, cheers. Here, here. Here's to, to being We need a cheer human. sound bite here. I know, we do. Do you have any uh, sound After effects? Buzz TV cheers. Oh. We do. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, this is me. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that, you got to record that one. God, you have a little, you, have a little um, you know, host voice back there. Yeah. Voice over. Yeah, so, I mean, I have to say, I feel the same exact way, Philip. and, you know, people out there, you know who you are, get very angry when we sit here and dish about their decisions on the show. Right. Well, that's our job. Right. You know, right. it's not, it's nothing personal. We're right. not, of you know, attacking anyone's, right. well, their character. That's what we're well, attacking is say, their right. character, not their person, their person themselves. And that's why when I, when I do go to the finale, if I do get to meet Brendan, Brandon, Brandon, I will be very cordial about it because I don't know him. Right. I don't know him as right. a person. I mean, every I can't tell people how many times people would come up to me, especially the first season, they would come up to me and go, "You're crazy." Mm -hmm. I know you're crazy. You're you're totally crazy. Yeah. You know, or right. you're delusional, or you're this or that. And for me, it's like, okay, that's what they saw. You know, that's right. the way it was edited. And then I just start being, you know, hi, how are you this afternoon? And have a conversation with them, and about two minutes later, they're like, you're not crazy. And I go, Well, no. since when was crazy bad? Well, to me, it's... <laughs> we're crazy. Yeah. We're all crazy. Well, Ooh. for me, it's about trying to be entertaining at the same time while I'm chasing a million dollars, and that, I swear, that's how it is. Like, in my family of 12, you know, we grew you up poor. You 12? Uh, yes, there's seven girls, five boys, and there were times when we struggled financially, but we always had music in the house, we always had each other, and right. we could make us each, each other, other laugh. And my brother could tell wonderful stories. Um, I could dance really well. I made up, you know, skits. Me and my other brothers and sisters, we would make up skits to be funny in them. We would entertain relatives. So for me, that's what Survivor is. And right. so I try to give the editors as much stuff that they can you possibly You just go use. with it with a ridiculous flair, Absolutely. which I do too. You know, yeah. I think you might have just explained to a lot of people out there who are just trying to figure out, you know, are you going out of your way to be the way you are? Are you really that way? Right. And truthfully... Yeah, I can only a imagine. Bit, yeah. yeah, growing up in a family that big, you probably had to do a lot to get noticed half the time. Well, right. here's the other part of it. When you're playing Survivor, it is a psychology game. So oh. in other words, the first time I played, yeah. um, I figured out something I like to think that was very useful for Boston Rob and very useful for me. Meaning, Boston Rob is a very smart, intelligent guy. When you're playing in the game with him, it comes across real quick. Like you go, he's smart. <laughs> he's a threat. Right. Goodbye. I think that's probably why 
three times before, he didn't win. Well, I was... By the way, we had a Boston Rob there, drinking yeah. game with you. Yeah. When every time you would say Boston Rob, we would do a little drink. We were cool. wasted. We I were wasted. Time, we, our first few shows were just like crazy. <laughs> However, he recognized, like I recognized, that as long as there was somebody else that seemed to be a bigger distraction than himself, mm -hmm. they would focus on me yep. and not him. And that became very uh, comfortable for him. Well, improve, I mean, that's dramatically a, improve his chances of winning the game, and it made it very sure for me because, frankly, if I hadn't changed that from the persona or my personality that I was putting on display initially in the game, businessman, hi guys, I'm a former federal agent, that guy mm -hmm. was going nowhere. He was going home next. Right. After Francesca, it was me. And then when I realized I need to say something here to, to Rob to figure out what can I say to him that will make him feel like he needs me more than the crew that are walking with him everywhere he goes, which was that alliance. So when I said to him, you know, what I said, um, he thought about it. And then he watched me do a couple of things like, hey, go get some wood. It's your turn to get the wood. This is no beauty contest. No, that doesn't make me likable. But at the same time, that meant that the girls went and said to him, I don't like him. What are we going to do? Well, I'll take care of him. We're going to get rid of him. You know, you just wait. Keep it up. Right. So between the two of us, we worked it that way, and I got to the end of the game. Okay. Well, now that you're bringing that up, I have to ask you a pretty, sure. pretty big question because there was that episode where you claimed you threw a challenge. Yes. And everybody was like, "No, he didn't really throw a challenge." And right. I'm not going to lie, we were all sitting here too, going, "He right. didn't really throw that challenge." I said it. Or, uh, okay. well, I, did, I did too. <laughs> absolutely. And here's the thing, you know, before we actually went into uh, the swap, you know, there's a lot of downtime. We were thinking, like, if there's a swap, what will we do? And one of the strategies we thought about wasn't, it wasn't like laid in, in concrete, but I thought about it again, which was whoever loses that first challenge, since, we, since they will already have the numbers, we need to make sure that these guys are going to be under a lot of pressure looking for an idol. So therefore, we need to make them use that idol prior to us coming back together with the merge. If that happens, then they could hook up with their old members and be ejecting us out of the game, the favorites out of the game. So I already had in play that it was going to be people going home and it wasn't going to be favorites going home prior to the merge. So that's why I threw that challenge. I wanted to make sure that either Mike or Matt or Julia went home in the case they had. Because what they don't show is that Did for a Did you not have time to tell anybody about it? Is that no, why? No, no, that, 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 was, that was why it seemed a little strange is because you didn't share it with the rest yeah. of the group. And that made, us, made everybody sort of think. Even why, your own alliance thought that. Here's why I didn't share it with the rest of the group. If you look at that challenge, we were all standing side by side. I didn't really know what role I was going to be playing until they said, okay, go up and toss the thing. Because I didn't start off being the tosser. And then when I got up and I became the tosser, that's when it hit me like, I'll just spin. I love it when you're the tosser. Yeah, because I was spinning. If you go, if I'm you not going to say any <laughs> tossing jokes. But if you look at the challenge, there's a thing where you could take the hook like this and spin it. Yeah. I took a long time doing it. Uh -huh. The other thing is when I would pull it in, if you look at the way Reynolds was doing it, he was going hand over hand like this really quickly. I was like. Yeah, no, we, we noticed that you were moving slow, but yeah. we thought we were, you were just being, Well, let's also you point know. this out, too. You were also really good at challenges. We actually yeah. read it a few times. We were like, wow, Philip, work it out. Right, yeah. right, you were, right. You were, you were, So you when were I needed to well. do it, I did it. But in that particular instance, I threw it. And it doesn't matter to me, you know, how other people view it. It's, you know, I know why I did it, and I'll right. go to the grave knowing why I did it. And it you makes know, it that much more interesting for me from a television perspective. I love the shows for that perspective. They have a way of creating that polarizing moment, doubt in people's mind. And Nobody will course. ever be able to get inside your ever. head, Philip. That, right. that is a sealed, tight place that only you truly Well, actually, you can buy the exactly. book, The Costa Rica That's Job, it. and get some insight oh, into the specialist I way of thinking. I can get insight into Philip's head by reading this book? Absolutely. Ding! Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Do you know what you maybe should bring up? Is maybe iTunes? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, while we're taking a moment here, um, everybody go to iTunes and download... Uh, and watch our our episodes here on After Buzz. It's it's a lot of fun. You can comment. You can tell us what you think. We're always tell open. us what you hate. Yeah, please, and we get a lot of that. Yeah, especially <laughs> Justin. Justin <laughs> normally gets the brunt of the things. Yeah, Justin. Justin checks it like by minute every by day, minute. Every yeah. day. So make sure you say something bad about Justin for not being here today, and um, you know yeah, share Justin, it with your I'm friends. Not, you know, Justin, I really think it's a <laughs> snub. You know that you weren't here for me today. Here, I'll do you know what's the funny? Do you know what's funny? Kidding. I don't know if you've really seen the show, but like Justin is like 
the biggest. The biggest Survivor fan, I think. Oh, yeah. Like, he I've knows him. every word about everything. Like, every season, every tribe name, like, he's crazy. And, like, every time we have, like, a really big, good guest, he's not here. So. I wish he was here because on, I Justin. would give him a stump question right off the bat. You, of my head. You're just going to have to come back. Yeah. That's all. I'll have to come but back. But we're not done with this one yet. We That's still right. have some Absolutely. more game to talk about yes. because, um, I mean, the first half of the show is pretty predictable. You well, know, do you know what sucks about um, a double elimination? Is like if you're the first one eliminated, no one even talks about you really. I mean, like Reynolds was like a huge like force the whole game, and that we're already like whatever. I know because uh, Andrea was such a big. You he know. was a good player. Yeah. You think about it, people were after him he like was from good. the very beginning, and he made it this far. We couldn't even believe he made it this far. Yeah, uh, we he were... couldn't believe he made it this far. <laughs> right. And the fact that Eddie is still there is also just well, he was a such a physical threat in the game. Yeah, right. right. He was know. really good. Yeah, but it was a good tribal council. It's definitely worth talking about because uh, Dawn basically tells everybody that she's untrustworthy. Right. Which I thought was very interesting. I'm right. like, you know, it, that's the thing Jeff is so good at. He will ask questions, and if people answer them, they just like sh show their cards. They're right. like, oh yeah, these are the cards I'm holding. Oh right. yeah. Right. Oh. Oh wow! I just did that. He's like he's like Oprah Winfrey. He will just get all everything out of you. He will get you crying by the end. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And he's I so good at it. I swear, I don't know, Eric. The more his hair and grows on his face and his head, he starts looking more and more like Chewbacca to me. Right, <laughs> especially because he's getting thinner, and thinner, and thinner, and his head's just That's getting a good bigger. Analogy. Yes, I think somebody <laughs> said that out there. Actually, somebody give me a chewy sound. Yeah. Was that a the, chewy sound? I was my attempt at Chewbacca. I just I'm can't. so bad at Gay it. Gay guys don't do that. <laughs> Oh, 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 I can't uh, even read it. Yeah. <laughs> so so Reynolds see. gone. J Reynolds gone, and then bless uh, him. Yeah, J Jeff brings uh, back the uh, the sore subject after uh, Eric wins the next immunity. Like, oh, I remember the last time I put a necklace around your neck, Eric. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> You gave it away to the girls, and you lost. And he did it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. You have to wonder. Like, yeah. that, I, I really did feel like him handing that immunity idol to Andrea was the same thing. It was right. the same thing. It really was. It's a, it's a pretty... It's a, it's a very powerful okay. tool to hand to someone else. So had you been the one to dig it up right there, would that have gone in your pocket? Oh, yes, it would have. It would have been like, hello, welcome to my pocket. Excuse Hit me, Andrea. It. I found it. You have yeah. a clue. But, I mean, it does suck when you have an immunity idol and everybody knows it because you are obviously the target. You have to play it. Yeah. Rule 101. If you got the idol in that situation, everybody knows it, you play it. Especially that late in the game. Yeah. When right. you're talking no about blind sides. Right. Like well, if you're in love. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She felt pretty safe out there, and that's probably what happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what she even said herself. Yeah. 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 The and second then, you feel safe, you're yeah. gone. Exactly. That's what Philip and I both looked at each other when she said that in the episode. Oh, so true. I'm totally safe. Yes. Oh, boy. Bye bye. Yep. See you later, Andrea. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, I don't know, Reynolds and his. Uh, <laughs> Well, it, Creepy mustache. I wrote that yeah. down too. Reynolds mustache. Like that's a talking point. Another thing. It's a total talking point. They yeah. like, cut to him. I was like, ah. What's so funny is like, <laughs> normally once you go get cleaned up and you come back for the jury, you look better looking. Yeah. But it was like he was like better looking when he was dirty scruff boy on the yes. beach. Yeah. I don't know who well, told him that the, was an okay mustache. Well, I think the way he cut it, he cut it so perfect like that as opposed to giving either leaving the coming of the, the wildness part of it, you know, when it's got the little extra hairs. I mean yeah, we thought that <laughs> then we thought of that, you know, just what your reaction was was our reaction, you know, like Reynolds, you're gonna did you, you guys reacted to his, did you give yeah. him any crap for that? I, th I thought of like, you know, Clark Gable back in the day, you know, yeah. was that perfect? <laughs> I was thinking pedophile, but you know, that's just where my head went. Wow. I'm not going to go that far. I know, yeah. it's no, I so that far. Um, yeah. It's kind of like uh, when guys over, or get their eyebrows waxed. That's just too and much. And they're like too waxed. Too right. much. Right. Yeah. Or too much bronzer, maybe. Is there such a thing? No, I can see myself. <laughs> I've never, I've never done the, uh, the waxing on the eyes there. Yeah, and I thought it was funny that um, Eric, he's like, he's got the immunity necklace, and he suddenly, I don't know what it is with these people, but they, when they're the swing vote, they all think that they're in control of the game. game yeah. Right. No, I, I am the star because I just won. Like, literally, that's what yeah. they do. It's crazy. Yeah. He's like, I'm, you know, playing both sides. I'm the swing vote. I'm in control of the game. Now, I know as someone who was in a swing vote position, it is a very powerful place to be, but it 
it doesn't put you in control necessarily right. of anything beyond that. that point. Right. Control yeah. of yourself for the moment. <laughs> for the moment. Right. You're not in control until you get handed that million dollar check. Right. <laughs> I mean, you never know That's until right. the end. Do you know what I mean? Everyone yeah. thinks they're in control. Right. Yeah, it's funny when you hear that, the chitter chatter behind the scenes, everybody's like, I'm in control. Right. And then you hear, I'm in control. Well, right. the closest I get to it is like with Stealth RS. I, I created Stealth RS. Yeah, oh, well, there you and, go. and we, you know, and I gave names. You know, you you're, you're like, you know, you're trying to control, and I had a certain level of control, but I was always aware that it was fleeting. Yeah, because there were so many people within the own alliance that were off doing other things. You well, know, that was, I couldn't control. It was so fun to watch, like, after you got voted off, to watch everyone suddenly, they were all like, <laughs> oh, my God, right. I can't think for myself. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like scattering on the beach. Yeah. What did you think um, when you found out who the favorites were this season? Because there's been a lot of criticism amongst oh. fans and everything that they weren't, like, you know, super high caliber. I mean, between yourself, maybe, like, one or two others, there's not, like, really big known names, big draws. Right. Well, I, you know how I looked at it is the... I mean, Survivor has been such a wonderful franchise for CBS and, you know, Mark Burnett Productions and, and, and Jeff Probst in the sense that, you know, they've built this loyal fan base. They have certain people that they've been able to, uh, you know, bring back to as repeat, repeat players that, you know, enhance the game. Right? right. And I like to think that with this season, we had enhance. Some, enhance. <laughs> enhance. <laughs> Go ahead. No pun intended. Um, but I, I, mean, I, didn't even get I mean, like, look, we, we're seeing some pretty good players uh, through the, through this game right now that are right. that are staying in it. I mean, like you say, no one. You guys didn't expect Renault to stay. I could easily see him coming back. You know, Malcolm's definitely a, a comeback guy. It's ended up you know? being a great season, season. But I'm saying from the very beginning, you wouldn't think that those people. But I guess what you say is right. They great people in casting. They picked you know people who they thought this would happen. No, nobody quit the game. Right? Yeah. Uh, a I, amen man, to that. that right? No nobody, quitters no, this season. Nobody quit the game. Jeez. And I think that Shamar almost quit. Almost. Oh my God. <laughs> See, I totally forgot he even played this season. I know. Oh. It's so hard to think of the early people, right? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> almost is, you know, is still not that. And, and I still think that, you know, they do a great job of bringing a group of people together and, and, and have them play and compete, you know. Um, I certainly enjoyed this season immensely playing, you know, with, with the crew. Um, I, and, I, and you're always fun to watch. Philip. Thank you. Thank no matter, you know, you're, you're a very polarizing person. Like some people just like, ah, right, right, you right, know, right. but as, matter, a right? as a polarizing person, honestly, I, I always say love me or hate me, mm -hmm. but indifference is the kiss of it's, death. Exactly. Right. So, and you were a fun person to love, to hate, to everything. And I, I, one thing I love about you, when I met you in person, I was just like, he gets it. You know, it is a game right. and it's, this is an amazing experience. Right. And, Absolutely. And, the most extreme circumstances you'll ever be in in your life, and at the end, you really just have to look at it as this positive, life-changing event. Right. Yes, I would hope that people get a chance to look at my day after video that I did for, for oh, this season. I it's will watch It's such a now. great video because it really, I had 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 a, um, you know, this 24-hour uh, time period to kind of regroup, get showered, look, get fresh, and get some really good food in me that they had there mourn it and everything yeah, else. And you, yeah. you really get to see, you know, my personality, you know, the way I'm in my everyday life, so to speak. You get to see, you know, the joy to be, you know, 54 years old, getting to play a game that 100,000 people submit to go, you know, to try to get into every single year. Um, and then go to this incredible place, have this incredible experience, have it displayed, you know, across the globe. Um, get an opportunity to write a book now, right? Yeah. And, and meet wonderful fans who come up to me. Um, I, I can't tell you the love I feel from people out there now, both in Twitter and Facebook, and when they come up to me. So I feel so <clears throat> blessed to have had the opportunity to be on Survivor. Um, you from from Philip's mouth to your ears, ears. There you go. Slade, this yeah. is That's a good way. And um, just wrap things up real quick. Um, we have to talk a little bit about what happened at the end of Survivor. Andrea goes home with an idol in her pocket, and yep. we're <laughs> so sad to see her go. So sad. She played yeah. such a great game. Great she kid. did. But, very good um, competitor, very yeah. great at challenges. Excellent competitor, yeah. a really, you know, hardworking individual, both in her personal life yeah. and in the game. I Sexy can't wait as to hell. Meet. Yeah, she's so cute. She's I can't actually, wait to meet you, Andrea. I'll person. tell you what, there is no survivor, this is hands down, that when men meet me, the first thing they, the first person they talk about is Andrea. So cool. oh. She's so pretty, she's so hot, <laughs> what is she like? And then they ask me about Brenda, but they always ask me about Andrea. <laughs> Well, now wait, you know Andrea. Quick yeah. Brenda comment. Isn't Brenda pregnant? 
I really don't know about that. I heard, this is what I was going to tell you guys last week. Yeah. I heard that Brenda's pregnant and that she's like seven or eight months and she's not coming to the finale. What? So she's really not saying anything. She's really not going to I wonder if they'll there. like Skype with her or video. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Th that would be a first. No one's ever not shown up to their own finale. Because I don't think she could fly because she's that right. far along. I can't wait to find out. Yeah. All right, well, that being said, we got to wrap things up here. <laughs> the baby's um, not going to know any words. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just want to say thanks to all you fans out there for tuning in. Again, go to iTunes, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, where can we find you, Philip? How do we get a hold of you? Okay, you can get a hold of me a couple of ways. You know, I have, uh, if you want to know what's happening in general, philipshepherd.tumblr. That's my Tumblr blog site. Um, of course, uh, P. Shepherd TV is uh, P S H E P P A R D T V for Twitter, and then it's Philip W. Shepherd on Facebook. You'll be able to all you can find over. Me. He's but all you, over. But you can get my book on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, at 38,000 distributors around the world. You can get this book. So wherever you're listening, you can go on any of those uh, online stores and get the book. Get the so, damn book, people. That's right. And what about book. you, Ryan? Where can we reach you? Get me Ryan A. Carrillo on Twitter and Instagram. I'm also on Facebook. So give me some love, people. And you can find me on Twitter and at Jerry Manthe, or you can go to jerrymanthe.com. Love you bunches. See you Bye, next guys. week. Bye, guys. It was great. Love it. <laughs> Kisses. Thanks, Philip. Yes, it was wonderful. Thank you guys both for having me. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.